Welcome to our topic, golfer's elbow. Golfer's elbow and the intense pain that it causes. But golfer's elbow isn't something that only bothers golfers, but lots of other people as well. There's golfer's elbow on the inside and tennis elbow on the outside, but it also affects many other jobs and sports activities. Let's start with a special foam roller massage. We'll do that on the wall to clear everything free of all the deposits and to get a starting boost. And then on to the exercises. We're going to do this at a pace you can easily follow along with, so please do that. I'm going to give Ida the mini foam roller. You could use something similar, just make sure that it gives in a little and is not too hard so we can apply some good pressure. Ina, we're going to assume that you have a golfer's elbow in your left arm. That means we're going to go, face the wall, and put your arm against it. You could do this on a table or on the floor, but since we're standing here anyways, let's use the wall. And now, push your arm against the roller and slowly roll upwards. Very slowly, up and up and push. If it's too hard for you on the wall, use a table and then gravity can help you out. We'll do the other two exercises on the wall as well and you won't have to change places then. We're rolling upwards till we come to the inside. Here with a golfer's elbow, that's where the pain is. Slowly going upwards. Use your other hand to help yourself, adjust the height, to maximize the force you can apply. And roll towards the inside of the elbow. Great, Ina, just lower the roller to get a better angle. And when we've arrived, we take the roller away and change to the outside of the arm. We turn our arm to the outside so that we roll on the outside and, and turn. Yeah, good. So that we could roll on the outside, more like this. Going upwards. This is going the other way now. We should reposition you so the camera can see this, so that we roll on the outside and land on the upper end. Great, slowly up. And if you need, at a certain height, simply readjust the position so we have more force. And you just turn so that you end up with the roller here on the outside. Great. Try and keep the pressure on. Many of you might find it easier on a table, but why not try it this way? Practice makes perfect. Okay. Now, let's take the Medi foam roller and go to the upper arm. Let's put it on the wall like this and lean the outside of our upper arm against it. Turn around, Ina, so we could see. I hope you at home can still see this. Slowly keep on rolling forward. We place the bone in the groove of the roller and continue to roll forward. So that we inch by inch develop some pressure along our upper arm up to the shoulder, just a bit more around your shoulder. Perfect. I'll hold the roller. Now, you face the other way and put the inside of your arm against it. And we're working our way up just a bit higher. Roll along the inside, along the biceps, to this area here, to the front part of your shoulder. 
slowly and with pressure. You need a certain amount of pressure to have any impact at all between the cells so that some fluid is squeezed through these tiny intercellular spaces. And slowly, you can start to untangle the matted fascia to undo the job given to these little spiders we call fibroblasts. Okay, we keep moving along to the left until we reach the inside of your shoulder. Great. Let me take this. Perfect. So, that was the foam roller massage, and now we're going to take a look at a few stretches. So let's get down on the floor. And here, we were working on your left arm. So, uh, please turn around. So we stay on your left arm. Now you, at home, take your left hand in front of you and rotate your arm outwards until your fingertips point towards your knees. Then we place our hand on the floor at an angle that is still bearable for you. This is where we start. Let's clock the time. And then you move backwards. And get a good stretch going. Back up even more. Always under 10 on your personal pain scale. But above eight, use your breathing, and you'll notice a rather strong stretch here. Increase your stretch, slowly, step by step, as you already know, slowly work your way into the stretch, consistently increasing the stretch. Breathing in means stop. Breathing out means back up a little more. When you notice you're dropping below 9 on your pain scale, even under 8, then at the latest, you should increase the stretch a bit more. The best thing would be if you took the stress, the stretching pain, and set it at around 9.5. That's the best time-effect ratio. more, increase more. Remember, it's very important to take your time with this. Stretching for 10, 20, 30 seconds won't do it. You might as well go and have a cup of coffee or a cappuccino, because that doesn't have much effect, almost none. And then we slowly leave the position Slowly leave it. At first, it'll be a little bit hard to move your hand. Try and get back in its normal range of motion. Okay, now we're going to work on the other side. And now, watch carefully. We take our hand, hold it in front of us, but then rotate it, make a fist, and then bend the fist and rotate our hand inwards. Then we put our hand, as it is, on the floor. Then we take our other hand to hold our fingers and our thumb so that the fist cannot open. No, no, stay like this. Ina wanted to adjust the angle, but that's blocking your view. We started here, like this. You could see a gap here. Okay, stay like this, Ina. Push into the floor without changing the direction. Push straight from above, axially, into the floor. And that is the stretch we want to increase. We're stretching the extensors. We have to work on both sides. You know that concept already. And automatically, the tension in your forearm becomes normalized, more physiological, as it is called. Especially with this exercise, it is important. Not a lot may change in the angles, but it is very important to hold it like this for at least 
two minutes and to make sure that your hand, with Ina, it's her left hand here, stays closed. Because as soon as you open your hand only a bit, the stretch disappears. So your other hand has to make sure that your fist stays closed. Great. Increase the stretch, and if at this angle your wrist has touched the floor, then you could shift around a bit like this until your wrist is about to lift up off the floor, and that gives you more room again to go deeper into the stretch. That's a bit tricky, but with enough practice, you'll be able to do it. Increase the stretch a bit more. We're almost done. Stay at 9.5 on your personal pain scale so that the stretch intensity has a substantial effect and you'll feel relaxed. You'll feel very relaxed afterwards. Okay, let's leave the exercise. Wonderful. Now, we've got a good handle on the problem going from the wrist up to the elbow. Now, we're going to take care of it coming from the upper end. To do that, Ina, please lie on your stomach. Great. Slide down a bit, please. And now, we extend our left arm out at a 45-degree angle and put our other hand up as if we wanted to do a push-up. Put our shoulder onto the floor with our armpit, if possible. I'm going to start the time. Now we turn our trunk, bring our right leg out. That one here, not the left one. So we are in a stable side position. And then we turn into the stretch. And you may feel this stretch in your right elbow, shoulder, upper arm, all the way to your chest. And then you increase this stretch. Increase more. Hold the angle. Make sure you don't change it in your rotation. More of a stretch. And breathe in and out. Always remember, if you feel some pain while stretching in an area where the pain you want to get rid of usually sits, then that is a good sign that you're doing the right exercise. It's not always the case, but it happens. It reassures you that this is the exercise you need and will help you get rid of the problem. Great. Yes, let's move more into the stretch. Use your breathing. A deep breath in means stay and hold. Exhaling means you have room to increase the stretch, and you should do so. Go deeper into the stretch. Great. Good breathing. Another few seconds and we're almost done. And then there's one last exercise. Slowly leave the position, slowly, nice and slow. Now you could stay on the floor. Now, just bring your arm up, above your head, your left arm. Slide down a bit more so your hand is still on the mat. And now, bend your left arm so that your left hand touches your left shoulder. Okay. Now, take your right hand, and your right hand should now push your left forearm into your shoulder. And at this moment, the stretch starts working. If you're already down on the floor with your shoulder and thus have no stretch, you simply prop up your elbow with this roller, and that gives you the space you need to get the stretch going. And now you just work your way into this. So, Ina, keep working on the stretch.
Great. Just a little longer, please. Always check out where you can get the most intensive stretch. Maybe work with your upper body a bit, turn a bit. Try out slight changes in your position to increase the stretch. And always keep applying pressure here with your right hand. Great. Breathe in, out. Stay under 10, but above 8 on your personal pain scale. Always remember, when you're under 8, the effect drops dramatically. If you stayed at 5 or 6, you would have to do the exercise 5 times as long and still wouldn't have the same effect. Just a few more seconds. Increase it a bit. We're almost done. And now we're done. Slowly leave the position. Always move slowly after these kind of stretches. Maybe get up a little bit. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was our foam roller massage and a series of exercises that we've created for golfer's elbow. If you liked it, we'd appreciate a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel so you won't miss anything. Bye-bye. See you soon.